a lot to talk about at the State House this week as yeah, well. For sure. This week I spoke with House Speaker Todd Houston and State Representative Greg Porter. Both had a lot to say about the state's efforts to bring more jobs to Indiana. And I also asked Speaker Houston about some of the other big issues on his plate in the next few months. The most recent revenue report we saw, substantial gains in revenue and substantial uh, tax revenues collected that were higher than expected. What was your reaction to seeing that revenue report? Obviously very pleased. You know, the Indiana economy is, is, is running full steam right now. Uh, talking to employers, the biggest problem we have right now is, is finding more workers. So that's a great problem to have. But in the short term, we also have to really make sure we're skilling up our workforce. You know, there, there are all sorts of jobs available. Um, and, and skilling up our workforce for those advanced manufacturing jobs, those skilled labor jobs uh, is critical. And we're heavily focused on that. We've been focused on that. And coming out of the pandemic, uh, uh, we, we really hope that, that we can meet the needs of, of our employers. We always projected that we would have more revenues coming to the state of Indiana. Um, so many times we kind of lowball uh, what, what our projections are. However, we saw that trending way back in the, in the last quarter of last year, uh, more revenues coming to the, the city uh, and to the state of Indiana. Uh, you know, with the stimulus dollars coming in, the American Rescue Act. What do you think that tells you about Indiana's economy right now? Well, our, our economy is, is, is doing well, as, as well as the country's economy. Um, I, I, at the rate that we're going, we're, we usually project about 5% growth. Uh, at this point, it looks like, uh, you know, through the federal government and the uh, dollars that we receive from them, our economy is going to grow uh, at least 7% or even more. There will be some ways that I think we may have to pivot because of, of all the dollars that, that the growth of the economy uh, what we're going to do with some of those dollars to help take care of uh, the people within the state of Indiana. And it's, it's something that I, I've said for the, uh, since last October, and particularly we're not broke. I think we're going to do better than what you anticipate. Um, the key point is that what happens once we reach uh, that $2.8 billion, almost $3 billion surplus, what are we going to do for the people of the state of Indiana? That's the bottom line. Are we going to sock it away and, and take it off the records and have a hip pocket type budget? Or are we going to look at minority health, other human infrastructure to generate capital needs or programs, uh, so trust funds, so we can take those dollars and help those individuals within the state of Indiana? A lot of the Republican lawmakers have weighed in on IU's vaccine mandate. What are your thoughts? Does this current vaccine passport law ban public universities from requiring proof of vaccination? Well, I think the, the attorney general made clear that it does. Uh, House Bill 1405, uh, uh, you know, prevented that. I think, you know, I used her loud and clear for myself and uh, many people from out the state, around the state, so many people I've heard of that that you know, they have concerns with the policy that they've announced. I use, uh, began that process of walking that back. Uh, look, we're making progress every day on the pandemic. And I mean, you know, cases are dwindling. And, and uh, so, so I think, you know, there's, an, there's a middle ground on all this. I think IU is just trying to get the uh, needs to work itself back to that middle ground. Do you have any response on the governor's lawsuit against the General Assembly regarding your ability to bring yourselves back into session? I don't. Redistricting. Um, are there any concrete plans yet about when about you'll be coming back into session for redistricting and what that process is going to look like? No, because we don't know officially when we'll get the data back. We've heard we might receive that data uh, at the back end of, of August. Um, we'll see if that holds true. We'll begin the process of doing statewide meetings and a listening tour uh, sometime this summer to get people's feedback on, on what they'd like to see. And we'll follow the process that we followed largely in 2011 as we did redistricting, but timeline is, is unsure yet. We really can't do anything until we, we have that data. Sure. Some people have been concerned about the fairness of the process. What, what would you say to them on that? You know, we will follow all federal and statutory uh, laws and regulations around it. Uh, I'm, quite, I'm quite comfortable with it. All right, Kristen, that whole legal battle between uh, the governor and lawmakers, though, House Speaker didn't have much he wanted to say about that. Right, he didn't. <laughs> and, of course, we could 
be hearing more next week about where things stand as the issue goes in front of a judge in Marion County on Wednesday. All right, Kristen, thanks. Welcome again. No doubt a lot happening for lawmakers this summer sure already. Thing. Normally a quiet time of the year, not so much this year. Right. Thanks for uh, having it all covered for us this week.